Travels of the El Azaba is an audio narrative set in the world of Bastion using 5e compatible characters. A dark fantasy world with chaos, intrigue, magic, and mystery. The story, setting, and sounds are written by Lonomy and published by Lonomy Creative. Tune in for episode 14, Lament. Darian, Carpathian, Edward, Newt, and Moore sat quietly in the corner of the upstairs hallways of the Calamard Sanctum, pondering over the malefic appearance of the human named Killian Bisque. None could recall an instance where anyone by that name had passed into their adventures. Despite this, Darian coiled around his amulet, brow caked in sweat, as the weight of the moment slowly began to drain from his muscles. It was Carpathian who spoke first. Rarely had the wizard been able to halt his tongue in a moment of reverence. This appeared no different from the other moments where the captain had clearly needed a second to collect himself. Who or what that devil Killian is, he is a human. All humans are cloaked in a shroud of their own creation. One that tethers them to the earth and does nothing to shroud them in mystery. Best we make for that alleyway to end his miserable life. Darian exhaled sharply, turning his heel into the ground and sitting upright. He shot a look of disdain across to his bosun. One that time and time again proved only that Darian's patience had its limits, that only he could reach. Does your intrepid, hollow musing know no end? Carpathian, it is your foolishness that will be the death of you and the crew. Stay your wicked tongue and allow me a moment. The captain paused, as if to think on his next words. He took a deep breath, followed by another. And as he exhaled for the third time, a peace seemed to fall over him. His eyes closed. He felt the warmth return to his body. His hand clutched over his breast pocket. And in only a handful of seconds, he regained his composure. We will meet with Bisk, yes. Let us not be hasty, though. We have only just done battle with the Witch of the Sea. If our business has not escaped the eyes of a man like him, one we have no quarrel with. Then surely there are others who have seen as well. Best not to stride into the open marketplace and meet the ire of something more foul and more... He trailed off for a moment, turning toward Carpathian once more and cocking his head. Devilish. As each member of the crew collected themselves, dusting their attire off the warped, slatted floorboards, it was Newt and Edward that inquired after the gang of humans that had called them out. Priest, pastor, sorcerer, and knight, each one of them spoke of the many disturbing gangs that walked the streets of the Briny Ward. It appeared that Bisk was only one out of many who might want the blood of a foreigner let alone a pirate who is so able to deftly slay a witch, and with beastmen within their crew for good measure. Though Carpathian seemed not to mind the insults that had been thrust upon him, Newt's disposition had turned quite rapidly at the thought that he, in his green-skinned visage, could position danger on any member of the crew. And so, taking a few arcane enchanted jewels from his satchel, Placing them into a geometric pattern, he cast an illusory form upon himself, donning the guise of a black-haired young boy of around Edward's age. And with explicit direction and their courage in tow, the crew of the Ellis Arbor stepped onto the cobblestone streets once more to meet with their newest admirer. It didn't take long for them to spy the distinct horseshoe sign upon a lamppost at the corner of the shallow alley. Iron Foot Road, it was called, and it stunk of the same foul likeness of Bisk and his gang. A 
Upon the edge of the corner, a quaint and barely standing orphanage stood. Its three floors stood awkwardly at an angle that seemed likely to topple over in even the slightest of breezes. Though despite this, it stood as somewhat of a mirrored reflection of the otherwise drab surroundings. Taking in the road from a distance, both Newt and Ed kept a watch at the threshold as Darian and Carpathian stepped around into the wet, crumbling cobblestones. Following behind, Moore kept a close distance behind the captain, a wisp of yellow spores gathering around Darian's head. Rapport spores, they were called, very uncommonly utilized by the simple-minded Mykonid, but allowing them the ability to translate simple, short ideas. Though the message they translated was shorter still. I don't like this, Captain. Less than 50 paces down the narrow road before a distinct and recognizable sound could be heard from a nearby alleyway. A single crossbow bolt ricocheted from behind a southern wall, bouncing off a lamppost before embedding into a sign for what appeared to be a local brewery. Stepping forward, the lithe, leather-cloaked thug that had gathered with Bisk in their last meeting. His crossbow drawn, he fetched another arrow from his quiver before striding out brazenly in the road before them. And from the northern side, another leather-clad individual slunk out from the shadows. One of the brothers, balding and hunched, wearing a heavy cloak that made metallic scraping noises. And hoisting the cloak from his shoulders, he revealed all manner of dagger, blade and axe upon his vest, his hands reaching for a gnarled short sword and a hand axe. The captain felt more cling to his leg as he turned to see the taller of the two brothers, sluggishly dragging his crude hook from a building behind them. They were, as far as the captain could see, surrounded. But without a moment's hesitation, Carpathian turned to the captain with a gleeful look of violent pleasure. All the best with your negotiations, Captain. I'll make short work of that one. His eyes darted toward the taller of the brothers, lurking behind with his rusty hook. In quick, brisk movement, he gathered his cape around his form, his staff thrust into the stone, and with a crack, his form turned to shadow, disappearing into the ether. This was all the thugs needed as a sign to enact their plan. The weapon-clad thug rushed in with weapons drawn, swinging his blades wildly as the captain recoiled to where Carpathian had just stood. Grabbing his hammer, he drew an enchantment upon the sanguinary sigil, and coiling, rushing wind began to gather around the weapon in his hand. The thug swung his weapon twice, barely missing the captain's shoulders and blow after blow was parried by the captain with his gavel in hand. The taller crossbowman pulled his weapon from his hip, firing at the captain that danced wildly to avoid sword strikes. And though the first shot would find its mark, it was more that strode forward, gathering red spores around his body and swelling to twice his normal height. Roaring with contempt, he interceded between the captain and the bolt, catching it mid-air in his now engorged, trunk-like arms. As the battle had begun, Newt and Edward began to scurry down the road, drawing their weapons as they did so. Edward levelled his rifle as he stepped into the range of the crossbow-wielding thug, levying it toward a nearby stack of rotten barrels. Firing a shot of white, hot flame. It arced toward the debris, setting it ablaze in a shower of sparks and embers. And gathering his cloak around him, the thug cried in pain, covering his eyes as he made for the adjacent alley. Newt, in his human form, took a series of cobblestones from the ground, launching them into the sky as he chanted a series of arcane words. Immediately, they danced in the air, shining a soft blue light before rocketing toward the bladed thug. 
In retaliation, the thug turned his axe and his sword toward the hail of stones, covering his eyes and face from their trajectory. This was all Darian needed to gain the upper hand. As he danced between the strikes of his opponent, he swung low, using the momentum to catch the thug's shins with the meat of his hammer. And as he did so, he toppled the brute, sending him backward into the road before lofting his hammer above his head, ready to strike a second time. Though, despite his tenacity, Darian's second blow did not land. A swift, heavy bang as one of the nearby buildings burst open and a ray of sickly red light arced toward the captain, catching him in the side. Darian veered toward his left, taking the full force of the blow as his hammer scattered a few feet away. Holding himself up, he turned toward the source of the ray. As he drew his pistol, ready to fire from the hip, he turned to meet a second ray, this time arcing from the stone upward toward his chest. His eyes, for the briefest of moments, met with Killian Bisk. Hanging out of a nearby window, his hand outstretched as a sickly red light began to gather for another strike. Darian launched backward, toppling into the stone as he had done to the thug. Pain racing through his body as the ray of energy began to dissipate. He breathed heavily as he grit his teeth, trying desperately to pull himself out of this vulnerable state. And levying his pistol toward the source of the ray, he saw Killian vault through the window, catching Edward on the side with a brisk and weighty kick. He drew his weapon and fired, glancing a blow only off the exterior of Killian's leather armor. The battle quickly reached a rousing, triumphant chorus as shots were fired, sections of building were torched by a hail of fire, and the crew of the Ellis Arbor traded blows with Killian Bisk and his thugs. And in the heat of the ensuing brawl, they had failed to notice the missing members. Neither Carpathian nor the taller of the brothers had made much of an entrance. That was until a familiar, gravelly voice echoed down the dank alleyway. Mercurial, your brother has something to tell you. In a swirl of arcane shadow, Carpathian reappeared at the eastern end of the road. His form wreathed in black shadows and his outstretched right hand clutching the bleeding, pained face of the other thug. With a look of sudden shock and dismay, the brother with the blades aloft turned toward the newly apparent scene. Mullers be no! Get away from him! Before the brother in Carpathian's clutches could scream a reply, he thrust his staff once more into the brittle cobblestones as a wreath of flames arced down his arm. His hands burst into a firestorm, carrying down the face and shoulders of the brother in his clutches, setting a fire into the thug's flesh. A single, tormented scream escaped from his mouth before his charred, blackened silhouette went limp in Carpathian's grasp. Never mind. He didn't seem much for words. I'm sure you'll meet him momentarily. Throwing the now lifeless body of Mollersby into the stone, Carpathian's attention turned to the other brother. That was until the leader, Killian, drew Carpathian's attention interceding between the infernal wizard and the now screaming, howling, grieving younger brother, Mercurial. Travels of the Ellis Arbor is made possible by the generous support of our subscribers, followers, and most notably, our patrons. Thanks to Rob Jenkin, Nathan Ebley, Ensign Turtle, and Alex von Hostrit for supporting us so far on this journey. Please subscribe, give a like or a comment, follow us on Twitter, and stay tuned for the next episode. Don't forget, 
Take care of each other.